Wednesdays on NFL Network relive NFL's biggest rivalries tonight. Two AFC North rivals duke it out. Ravens versus Steelers. You don't want to miss it. NFL rivalries at 8 p.m. Eastern only on NFL Network. Plus, Kyle, your guy Mark Ingram will be joining us in just a few minutes. I'm not jealous of much, but that angry runs running back connection that you have with him is so special. I think he calls you Kyle Big Trust Brent. So we can't wait for Mark Ingram. He is a fun dude every time we have him on. We'll talk about another running back right now. Our good friend Ian Rappaport uh, has new Broncos running back Melvin Gordon on his latest episode. It's a podcast you should definitely download and listen to. I definitely do when I'm doing my hair and makeup in the morning. It's Rap Sheet and Friends. And Gordon talked about the Chargers offense and why it wasn't maybe the best fit for him. Take a look. I really didn't play out to my strength, especially the first couple years there. I kind of just had to adjust. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, and, and make work. You know, it, it kind of wasn't a system built for me. Um, but, you know, I feel like, you know, Denver kind of runs my style um, of football. And, uh, you know, we're going we to, I think it's a, I think it's a great fit, man. <laughs> Okay, so Gordon went on to say how natural it's going to feel in the Bronco system compared to what he was doing to and in this place, L.A., with the Chargers. So, Nate, is Melvin Gordon set up, do you think, to have a breakout season in 2020? We don't talk about him very often here on the show. Breakout season? No. I'm not talking about him leading every statistical category for the running backs. I do feel like he's going to be on one of the more well-balanced offenses that he's ever been in. As long as Drew Locke can come in and take care of the ball, the host of wide receivers that they brought in, we know that they have tight end play. And, of course, that combination with Philip Lindsay and Melvin Gordon, that right there is key. So is he going to have a great year? Yes. Will the numbers reflect that? I don't think so because the ball has to be spread around, and that's a good thing. I, I don't believe at this point in his career Melvin Gordon wants to go out there and be used and ran into the ground. If he has a good year, the team has a great year, then you know what? He can go get those bucks that we know that he wants because that was one of the reasons why he set out last year. You know what was interesting with Melvin Gordon last year? He held out and it got tenuous and it got almost annoying for us to be talking about it every day. But no one resented him in that Chargers building. He got back to the team and he was welcomed back in open arms and he picked up right where he left off and was well liked by the team. Like he didn't cause a divide, which I think is a great, great I guess embodiment of what Melvin Gordon is like he, when he's there, he's your guy and he's a great teammate. I think he joins Philip Lindsay now. And he also joins a young offense that there's a lot of high expectations for, but we don't know if drew Locke is a great quarterback. We certainly don't know if Jerry Judy or KJ Hamler are great receivers. And we definitely don't know if the Broncos can take on the chiefs in that AFC West. So I would say this, let's hold on. Let's wait. I would say breakout. Look, he had some really good years with the chargers it would be really hard to top those numbers when he's not the featured back. There's something about a Broncos running back, though, that can give you that tingle, you know, especially if you played fantasy for a long time and you remember Olandis Gary and Mike Anderson and Quentin Griffin. Just these guys would show up in Denver and absolutely dominate a lot of them under the Shanahan regime. And the reason I get excited for this is because I think Melvin Gordon is a fantastic runner. The, my favorite stat about him was two years ago, before things got rocky last year, he led the entire NFL in yards per carry in the fourth quarter. That is an awesome, awesome running back stat about toughness and getting better as the game goes on. Listen, this thing with him and Philip Lindsay. Fantasy nightmare, that's such a headache, but those fantasy nightmares are always great realities mm -hmm. for Denver. I look at this as they're adding a big weapon that they think they're going to use a lot. I don't think Melvin Gordon's going to have 1,300 yards and 15 touchdowns, but people are collecting weapons to fight the Mahomes machine, especially in the AFC West. And if you buy into Drew Locke, and we spent a lot of time talking about those receivers, the Lindsey Gordon thing is kind of nice because maybe Gordon is the finisher. Maybe Lindsey goes for two and a half quarters, and then that fourth quarter stat – when it's time to hopefully put the Chiefs to bed or anybody they play, you hand it to Gordon, he starts trucking dudes. I get excited about it. I do. 
I, I'm not putting double-digit touchdowns behind him either. He had played in 12 games last year. He had nine touchdowns in that time. He had 900 yards. It could be a thousand-yard season for him if he's healthy. I feel like we forget, and he's obviously overlooked because of what happened with the emergence of Eckler and the fact that all we're doing is talking about the receivers in Denver right now. But he's still just 27 years old. I feel like we forget that about Melvin Gordon. He's mm. still young. He's still in his prime, and he should still have a huge, huge impact. And this team will miss him, I think, in 2020. Uh, Morgan Morning Football on the way. We're going to keep the running back talk going mm. heavy on this show. On this Wednesday morning, we will have Mark Ingram, the king of angry runs, joining us in a bit. A super, super friend of the show. Eric.